Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox, and you are taking a look at just some of the video coming in of the aftermath from that attack by Iran on Israel. Again, 181, that's an estimate, ballistic missiles that came down right there in different parts of Israel. We know there was one death, a Palestinian man who actually appeared to be hit by one of those falling missiles there who passed away. That is the only fatality that is known right now. We know that the Iron Dome did intercept a, a lot of these missiles, and a lot of people have asked what exactly the Iron Dome is. So I did have a chance to speak with an expert about that, and I do want to bring that conversation to you now. Uh, we just spoke, I would say, moments ago here. Tom Carrico is a senior fellow with the International Security Program and the director of the Missile Defense Project at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Tom, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Happy to be here. All right, so first off, I want to start with kind of a basic question, but we've all kind of heard about the Iron Dome, the aerial defense system. Can you explain overall what the Iron Dome is and, and really how it works? Yeah, so look, Iron Dome is one of a multi-layered uh, uh, defensive architecture that uh, that Israel has, that it's developed itself and with the cooperation of the United States uh, since the 1980s uh, on, uh, on this. Israel and the United States are partners back in the Strategic Defense Initiative uh, that President Reagan began, uh, and it's really been a cooperative effort uh, for that long. Uh, but it's important to recognize that it's only one piece of that larger architecture. So besides Iron Dome, which has getting a lot of attention and, and yay verily has shot down thousands of rockets uh, over the years uh, defending Israel, uh, there's also other uh, layers to this cake. There's David's sling uh, that kind of gets some of the uh, shorter uh, range stuff. And then for the longer range things, there's what's called the Arrow 2, uh, and there's the Arrow 3 system. And uh, we're still getting reports, but I suspect that the Arrow 2 and the Arrow 3 systems are probably, along with U.S. systems, what did most of the shooting uh, in this week's uh, significant attack uh, from Iran. The reason is uh, that these missiles uh, all or primarily came from Iran, and that means that they're longer range, and that means that they're higher altitude as they come in and higher speed uh, uh, going into space. And so that's you're going to need a, a different kind of tool uh, in the uh, from the toolbox for that kind of a threat. With these attacks from Iran, from Hezbollah, I guess the question is, is it possible for the system, the aerial defense system in general, to become almost overwhelmed? And then you have missiles that make it past that. Mm. Uh, it's, it's not just possible. It's 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 plausible and quite likely, uh, and I would not be surprised, of course, of course, we're still waiting on the details, I would not be surprised if these attacks were structured in such a way to try to uh, saturate uh, the defenses. That's how one would structure uh, an attack uh, carried out in malice, and this uh, certainly uh, would seem to be done with a lot of hostile intent. I've, it still surprises me to hear some folks say that, oh, well, Iran knew that uh, Israel and the United States would 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 uh, take so take out so many threats, and so it was just sort of a I don't know a ping pong uh, game. But I, I I do not believe that. Uh, anytime you send 500 or 180 threats at uh, your adversary, you do so with a hostile intent. Uh, and uh, indeed, it's a miracle that no one reportedly has so far been killed in Israel, except for, if I'm not mistaken, uh, a Gazan uh, whom a rocket body fell on in, I think it was Jordan. Um, but uh, there, that's not to say that there was not significant damage done. We've heard some reports of damage to uh, Israeli air bases and the like. Again, we'll see what the what the, the news reports come in as, but uh, it was it's it's a significant attack. You kind of already touched on this, but overall, does the Iron Dome work? I know that's kind of a, a tough question to answer, but have there been any major issues that, that are known of overall? Mm. Well, look, no weapon system is perfect. No uh, missile defense weapon system is perfect. Uh, nevertheless, the specific Iron Dome system has, as I said, taken out th not hundreds, but thousands of rockets uh, and such over the years, again, on the lower tier uh, threat side, the less sophisticated side. Now, does that mean that they've gotten everything? No, of course not. And in fact, the Israeli's philosophy for 
Iron Dome and for their uh, missile defenses uh, more broadly, their philosophy is to not let the best be the enemy of the good. And so relative to, say, the United States, which really prioritizes capability over capacity, which is to say really high-end stuff as opposed to lots of stuff that's cheap, uh, the Israelis do the latter. Uh, and they, uh, they, they've they had over the years to prioritize capacity uh, because of just the sheer number of rocket threats that have been coming from the south, from Hamas, and from the north, from uh, from Hezbollah. Uh, what you're seeing right now, however, is a very different posture, an overall strate different strategic posture on the part of Israel. They've kind of ha uh, had enough, and they're not going to take it anymore. And, uh, and that's what I think you're seeing uh, both in the south and, and in the north. When you talk about October 7th, we are approaching the anniversary, so to speak, of that attack by Hamas on Israel. Was the Iron Dome in effect? Was it working that day? Because we know that there obviously was a huge attack there. Was it in operation? And did it, I don't know if you'd say, do its job? So, uh, look, uh, the head of the Israeli Missile Defense uh, uh, Organization, uh, has come over and spoken about this in, in D.C. I've, I've been uh, hosted him for some public events. And yes, Iron Dome, as well as the overall architecture, uh, was in operation that day. It was, it was taking stuff out, uh, but uh, even more so on April 14, uh, when you had that much, much larger number of objects, uh, specifically 550 uh, uh, objects coming in. So, uh, yes, Iron Dome has certainly uh, been doing its reps and sets and uh, taking things out uh, on these, these multiple uh, big occasions. Can pieces of the Iron Dome actually be moved around to different locations? Does that happen? And would it kind of focus more on a specific area or is it kind of set up all over Israel? Well, I think it's uh, important to recognize that uh, the Israel's defenses, like any defense design for a particular country, is going to be suited to its geography and to its defended assets. You can't defend everything. Uh, it's a small country in this case, and so they are going to prioritize certain uh, defended areas, say major cities and, and things like that, as opposed to the Negev Desert. Uh, and so they let things go if it looks like they're going to uh, go into the into the desert. Uh, but uh, uh, that's not to say that mobility and deception of moving things around don't have a place. Uh, but for the most part, the things that need to be defended are relatively uh, static. Does the U.S. play a big role in really the operation of the Iron Dome and the aerial defense systems and keeping them kind of intact and working? So uh, again, I would emphasize the uh, close cooperative relationship between the United States and Israel over the years, over the decades. Uh, but fundamentally, uh, the operation of Iron Dome, the operation of these systems is going to be done by the IDF, uh, by the Israeli Defense Forces. Uh, that is not to say, however, that there is not a, a significant measure of uh, operational cooperation and especially of indications and warning, early warning that, hey, there's a lot of a lot of missiles that just launched from Iran, <laughs> point your radars over here kind of a thing. Uh, and again, we've heard uh, the IDF, we've heard uh, Israeli military officials say that and talk about the remarkable, uh, uh, the Im remarkable effects and the remarkable improvements uh, that U.S. cooperation has had, for instance, in the wake of October 7th, and uh, again on April 14. And I, I, I would not be surprised uh, if you hear some of those reports here soon. We've already heard from CENTCOM, uh, from U.S. Central Command, that uh, a significant number of U.S. standard missiles coming from Aegis ships uh, also were, were uh, knocking some of these things out of the sky, although really uh, out in space probably. My last question for you here, does any other country that you know of have an Iron Dome, an aerial defense system like this? Because one thing that's interesting is Trump has said that he wants one uh, for the U.S. Is that really a possibility? Hmm. Well, look, I, I, uh, the d global demand signal for air and missile defense broadly is uh, has gone up by orders of magnitude. Uh, the fact that we are in a new missile age and everybody wants standoff capability, everybody wants long-range precision guided munitions, also means that everybody wants the defenses against them. And so you've seen lots and lots of countries 
uh, uh, try to acquire all kinds of different air missile defenses. I think in terms of Iron Dome for the United States, look, we actually bought a couple Iron Dome batteries, the U.S. Army did, uh, but we sent them back uh, after October 7 because they were, again, more suited to the Israeli threats than to the U.S. Uh, global posture. Uh, that was fine. Uh, I think that was the right thing to do. So as a particular system, Iron Dome, probably not so suited to the United States. We've got different defense needs. Uh, but in terms of the demand signal for uh, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, hypersonic things, yes, uh, we're pursuing a number of those things. We're going to do, do a lot more. Uh, but uh, that's not an American idiosyncrasy. That is a global demand signal. All right, Tom Carrico, thank you so much for taking the time to join us, a true expert on the topic. So we appreciate you being here and helping to break it all down. Happy to do so.